Well, good morning to you. Boy, it is a busy morning so far. It's a Thursday. Glad to have you with us. You're watching Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we've got your HCC news and information for the next half hour or so. Got a great show lined up for you. A little shaky this morning. We're having some technical difficulties, so bear with us. We promise we're going to get our get it together for you, all right? So let's kick things off with Brittany Pacheco. She's here. She's live. She's at her home. Good morning, Brittany. Good morning, Todd. I, I, I caught what you almost did there. You know, we're trying to get our stuff together. Yeah, this morning. yeah. Get it. We're going to get it together this morning, one way or another. This is a G rated version show. So we <laughs> for now, uh, yeah. it is Friday <laughs> Eve. So, you know, that might have something to do with it. I don't know. Maybe the universe is just against us this morning. It's okay. Hopefully, we'll be able to be joined um, by our other guests. But before we get into today's show, I do want to take the moment to remind everyone to please follow us on our social media. That includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you can be the first to find out the latest video uploads from us. And last but not least to our audience, yes, I'm speaking specifically to you. We need your help to grow our audience. So Hit that share button at the bottom of this podcast. That way it shows up on your personal news feed so we can just share this information to those who might not know that HCC has social media and has this show on every morning at 10 a.m. So do that. We greatly appreciate it. And Todd, let's get into today's show. Okay, here's what we're going to do because we're having a few technical difficulties. We, we've got Dr. Manaz Kalani from HCC. Dr. Kalani, stand by because we're going to keep you as a second guest. We're going to have you on talk about counseling services here at HCC. But first, our first guest is Simone Leonard. and She is with the Buffalo Bayou Partnership. And it's Thursday, virtual family fun day here on uh, Up to the Minute. So, Simone, welcome to the show. Good to see you on our show this morning. Thanks for having me, Todd. So I mentioned to you before the show started, very familiar with the uh, cistern that is at the Buffalo Bayou Partnership. And, you know, that location, the space is legendary because I remember back in the 80s, you know, um, you used to be able to climb up on a hill near Buffalo Bayou and uh, you could look down into a cistern that was just a, a cavern and it was like a legend. They've got this cavern near downtown Houston. Well, you guys have been able to utilize that as an, as an incredible art space. Why don't you tell us about it? So the cistern right about now, it is used for an art exhibit um, called Time No Longer by Henri Sala. Um, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. But of course it was built in 1926. It was a reservoir. Um, it actually provided drinking water for all of Houston up yep. until it was decommissioned. And when it was, it was almost forgotten about for a long time. And so Buffalo Bayou Partnership restored it. And now it's a facility that can be toured by anybody who's visiting the area. And the same thing holds true. There's a way that you can look down. There's a, a looking glass that sits yeah. above the hill and you can actually look down into the cistern on a regular day. It's not available right now because of COVID restrictions, sure. but um, people can still do that. And the cistern is a beautiful space. And people are wondering, well, is the cistern reopened? Yes, you guys have reopened and you've got an incredible art exhibit in there now. Yes. Um, like I said, it's called Time No Longer. It was created by an artist who is from Albania. He lives in Germany. Right now, his name is Henri Sala, and he and several co-collaborators came to Houston, and they saw the space. They were inspired by Ronald McNair's story um, and how he was supposed to go up in the Space Shuttle Challenger and record a piece of music in space, the first recorded piece of music in space. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to do that because of the explosion. Um, and so that inspired Henri to create this magnificent piece called Time No Longer. It's a video and sound installation that takes up the whole cistern. You can walk around. It is immersive is a buzzword that people are using yeah. now, but it really is an immersive exhibit. Um, it's beautiful. It You have light flares and the lights cut out and you have... Um, wonderful music, the echo within the cistern is always something that's really epic to experience um, because it's literally 16 and a half seconds of echoing um, within there. And so, yeah, it's just a magnificent art exhibit, art installation, and we welcome everybody to go online and set up a time to tour it. And now talk about the tours themselves. Are you allowed, or do you, are they all guided tours or are you allowed to go in on your own in Peru's? How does that work? 
they're all guided tours. Um, so like I said, you have to book a, a time slot to go in and the cistern has some wonderful docents who will walk you through. They give you an introductory speech. And then after they tell you how to experience the exhibit, you can walk around and experience it for yourself for about 30 minutes. And then after that, it's done. I imagine you guys are also following safety protocols for people who are uh, concerned about getting out in public. I uh, imagine you need to be masked up and, and all that stuff. Yes, masks are mandatory um, when visiting the cistern. We have capped, uh, the tours used to be about 40 or 50 people. We've actually capped them at about 20 people now, okay. um, just to make sure that we can physically and socially distance within. Um, also, the cistern is a humongous space. It's the yeah. size of one and a half American football fields, and it's, I think, 87,500 square feet. So it's really easy to socially distance within that space, um, and you don't have to crowd your neighbors. And for, uh, are you open daily with uh, tours or uh, there's certain times? How does that work? So we're open daily. Um, what people can do is go online and actually look. We have a, a system that can show you availability for tours, what time slots are open, and just whatever time suits an individual schedule, they can go in and book it. Above the cistern, I know from living in the building that's across the street, I used to live there, um, you guys have a, a very large green space and also a stage pavilion area as well. Um, will that be utilized soon? I know that's been closed for COVID for a while, but will that be soon utilized for maybe festivals in the future? Yes, we have big plans for that space and we're also allowing people to rent the space. Um, it can be rented by the day. The entire area is called the Waterworks and it consists of the terrace um, that sits above the cistern um, and above the visitor center. There is a pavilion that uh, houses a stage and then there's also a huge lawn. And so all of that area can be rented out. Um, we have some programming that's planned also in connection with the art installation. So there will be a performance of the soundtrack for the art installation. Um, there will also be in September something we call Turntable Tuesdays um, oh, cool. that'll play on this record that spins throughout the entire art installation. So all of those things will be happening at the Waterworks. But anybody who wants to rent out the space, you are welcome to go and see if it's available on the days you want it and plan your event. Very cool. So you guys are part, the Cistern is part of the Buffalo Bayou Partnership. Um, and if you if you partake in Buffalo Bayou Park, like myself, that's part of the partnership. We certainly appreciate that. I'm out there very often. I live along the part, the uh, uh, Buffalo Bayou. But maybe you can tell us a bit about the partnership and everything that you guys operate. Yeah, so Buffalo Bayou Partnership was started in 1986, I believe. And we are responsible for revitalizing and restoring the Buffalo Bayou. So the green space, the bayou itself, um, we've cleaned it up, created a park, um, also restored historic sites along the bayou. So um, Sunset Coffee Building, Allen's Landing, the cistern are some of the things that we've done. Um, we have conservation efforts. We keep the bayou and neighboring areas clean. We help with um, one of the bat habitats. The largest bat colony in Houston is under the Wild Bridge, which is a part of Buffalo Bayou Park. Um, there are tons of things that we do in the area. If I rattled them off, we'd be here all day. I know. Um, another yeah. big project is um, in the East Sector and it's upcoming. I'd love to come back on another day and talk about it, but we plan on expanding East as well. Well, we've got our producer on uh, online right now, so you're booked. Consider yourself booked to talk about that east side expansion because we're certainly interested in that. Speaking of the bats, I know there was some concern over the hard freeze and uh, the, the bats because I know we lost a lot with the colony. But, you know, I went out on my balcony the other day and I said we live along the bayou in a high rise. And I could, it was the first time I've lived in this building that the sun was going down the right way and the bats were coming out. They were flying literally right next to our place. I grabbed my wife, we go out and watch them. And it was so heartwarming because guess what folks, the bats made it. There are tons of bats that were coming out and it was an incredible sight to see. Yes, we're really happy that the bats survived. Um, a lot of people were concerned about them because a lot of bats didn't make it through the freeze we lost. Um, over a thousand of them in the colony and several colonies across the city were hit because nobody was prepared for it. But um, we were able to work with some really good people who had conservation efforts in place and they took care of the bats that they could and the bats that were further up in the bridge were actually safe and warm. 
Well, they are out in full force now, and it's a great sight to see. Make sure you go visit the bats at the uh, Wall Street Bridge. Simone Leonard with the Buffalo Bayou Partnership, thanks for joining us this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, okay, I think we've got Dr. Manaz Kolani. Dr. Kolani, can you turn on your camera? Are you there? Yes, hello. Good to see you. Thanks for being Same on. Same here. It's not a Thursday without technical difficulties. We've <laughs> all been there. We know how it works. So I want to talk to you about some things. Uh, first off, you are with our counseling department here at HCC, and it's important during this uh, somewhat of a lockdown, even though we're starting to get out back out in public again. But it's important to students, faculty, and staff to know that you guys have been fully operational mm -hmm. and your services are available online right now. Absolutely. We are, there's all the services are available online and some of the campuses actually keep face-to-face um, -face hours as, as well on a limited basis. So those students who are interested in meeting with a counselor in person, we have limited hours that they can meet with counselors at certain right. campuses. Tell us about the sense of belonging summits that you have coming up in general. What are they and when are they happening? Okay, great. I'm glad you're asking me about my favorite subject. So um, since a belonging summit, we, we had our first summit in 2019. And um, the whole idea was to create a safe space for faculty and staff to talk about topics that are relevant to us, that are engaging, and at the same time, um, it, it's really life-changing and thought-provoking. We wanted to make it a solution space to, to talk about issues that all of us care about and, and have that exchange of ideas in a safe space. As I said, we offered it in 2019 in good old days when everything was face to face and uh, the summit was very well received. Actually, after we sent the evaluations, the evaluations were all very positive. So, we were all set to offer this summit in 2020, but then a little thing called COVID happened yeah. and we couldn't do it. So we finally decided to offer it virtually. So we didn't want to offer one long day. We wanted to divide it into three different days. So folks who can't attend all sessions, at least they can they can attend a section of it. So they're offered three Fridays, um, 16th, which is tomorrow, 23rd and 30th. We have a small committee of 14 uh, people with me, 15, and we have representation from all departments. And um, we have selected this content very thoughtfully and mindfully, and we wanted to include the student voices in it as well. So we have a panel by students, and um, the first one will air tomorrow. And tell us about, you know, big topics of discussion, especially in, in uh, the educational world, mm -hmm. world, equity and inclusion. Tell us how those wrap into this summit. I imagine you'll be covering those as well. Absolutely. That's basically the floor for this summit. We all know that there is a robust body of research that shows sense of belonging in students, college students, is associated with better outcomes, such as retention, graduation, persistence. And that not only applies to students, but also all of us as faculty and staff, regardless of our roles and jobs and the hats that we wear. Just start, think about it organizationally. Think about if folks who work for an organization didn't think that their ideas matter, that they belong, that they are at the table, that what they say really matters. And we can imagine that will stifle creativity, innovation, imagination, collaboration. So we all need to believe that we belong with the environment that we are navigating. And, and that is not only um, essential to our survival, but also to our ability to flourish, to grow. And it really sense of belonging, we all believe, and research shows that it's an innate need. It's not just, I want to feel like I belong. It's really a sense of, it's an inherent need in us as human beings. You know, if you turn on the television right now, it's impossible to watch any news program without stories on the race problems in this mm -hmm. country. Um, 
Obviously, this affects our students, it affects our faculty and our staff in the community in general. Are these things in a discussion that you guys are going to discuss uh, during these summits as well? Yes, absolutely. We have actually our guests. First of all, one of the segments that we are um, covering is about empathy. So just the theme of empathy runs through this presentation in terms of empathy, not just feeling somebody else's pain, but also um, encouraging us to take pro-social steps in terms of helping the other persons or person and, and take steps to, to make change. So that's the running theme. And also we are focusing on mental health as well as the importance of racial representation and diversity in everything that we do. So Absolutely. We, as I said, when we talk about the topic of empathy, we cover the fact that um, particularly recent months and what we have seen in terms of thousands and thousands of people coming out and show their, uh, their demonstrate against police brutality, that shows the empathy that regardless of where we come from, we are moved by this and we want to make some changes and we want to see change. So that definitely is part of our discussion and the running theme that runs through all three sessions. As you've been meeting with students over the last year during COVID, what are some of the main concerns you've been able to gather from them after listening to them over, you know, better part of 13 months now? Mm -hmm. I think vulnerability is a big, big issue. And, and then we have done so much in terms of talking about the fact that mental health is really important. So yeah. we see that the rate of depression and anxiety has really increased, not just in our student, but in general population. So we are very much mindful of that. And also the fact that students have to, for many of them, this is the first time that they actually come forward, show vulnerability and say that I need support. And it's important for us as an institution to create that safe space for right. our students to come forward. And I always say, you know, it's it's our students as well as our community, because us as people, we are impacted by all of this too. So definitely mental health issues have been really on top of like the list for us in terms of what students have been dealing with. And of course, you know, a cluster of uh, factors, um, you know, food, uh, housing, um, finances, paying bills. I mean, this has really been a trying time for everybody. So it's reasonable for all of us to know that our students are deeply impacted by all of this. Dr. Kolani, you, you hit the nail on the head with the mental health issues because that seems to be another reoccurring theme. Um, and in many cases, you know, uh, you know, we're seeing examples where police officers are having to confront mental health issues. And in many, in some cases, it turns deadly. Um, mm -hmm. We all know mental health is a big issue in this country. Most of us will agree that it needs to be addressed. How do we address it on a mass scale to try to prevent uh, problems that we're gonna deal with in the future? That's a very good question and a really big question. There's not an easy answer for that. But what I can say, unfortunately, most of the time, the only time we talk about mental illness is when a disaster happens. And that's not necessarily a good time to talk about mental illness. Um, it really has to become part of the culture. We know there is still a global stigma attached to mental illness. And we know that people are really hesitant about coming forward and asking for help. And we also know there are so many barriers in this you know, community for mental health. Houston is a good place, I would say, compared to many other you know, cities in the country, we have a lot of good you know, community resources, but access to mental health is still a major issue. Um, yeah. There is a lot of, again, stigma attached to it, help-seeking attitudes. People have, you know, sometimes we culturally are very hesitant in terms of coming forward and asking for help. And I think there is a lot of, you know, it has to be a multi sort of layered approach to this from policy change um, to access to mental health, to education and awareness. Um, and also, you know, I think on a smaller scale for us as an institution, it really is about about paying attention to how to support mental health causes and, and then how to really put our money 
what it needs to be in terms of bringing additional resources to address the mental health of the students. But this, on a larger context, I'd say it's a very complicated issue and yeah. needs a multi, multi-layered approach. Dr. Manaz Kalani, Director of Counseling and Ability Services. Uh, we will have the information for the summits that you're having in the social media posts for the show, and we've been encouraging folks to attend those. Thanks for being here. And we Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks yeah. a lot. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to Brittany with our news and announcements for the day. Uh, Brittany, all right, um, HCC, we have a committee here that is trying to move our campuses into smoke-free environments, and there are some incentives for people who want to get involved with this campaign. That's right. So this is for the greater Houston area. So you can show your support by signing up for our exclusive smoke-free HCC giveaways. So go smoke-free tea, as in t-shirt, giveaway. Uh, all faculty, staff, and students can pledge to be smoke-free by signing up to receive a free t-shirt while supplies last and post a pic of themselves in their HCC smoke-free teas on our kudos board. Now, the deadline to grab a t-shirt is the end of this month. That's April 30th. We also have uh, HCC quit kits. It was almost very difficult to say. Uh, managing life in school is challenging and stressful. Praise. Uh, so many people feel that smoking helps them relax, but smoking actually puts stress on the body. So sign up to have a quit kit full of goodies to help de-stress while supplies last. This is going to be a big thing. Um, so what's inside, you may ask? A stress reliever, a ball massager, essential oil, and more. I'm all about essential oils, y'all. That stuff actually does there help. So uh, the deadline to sign up for that is May 6th. Um, you can visit our Eagle Experience page for more information, and we'll have that link in the post after the show. You know what else uh, helps you relax and relieve Alcohol. stress? Tequila. Right. That's what I was going to say. There you <laughs> go. But that's kind of frowned upon. So stay away from that. Stay away from the tobacco and uh, maybe go out and run. That's a good stress reliever as well. A lot, I don't, like I don't believe in this nonsense about runners high and all that stuff. Like, no, I, I just ran outside with Luna because she had to go to, to use the bathroom. Yeah. I'm hurting. <laughs> well, we got to get you running. That's part of the problem. We have an expert on this show two times a month. And what does he do? He teaches people how to run. Maybe Brittany should be listening up. What do you well, think? Maybe if he can teach my bum knee to cooperate. You see, Maybe. that's an I thought I had a bum knee too. Listen, I did do cross country in high school, and that's where I threw out my well, knee. There you I'm go. Good. Get back to it. Come on. No, I'm good. Get you. Moving on. Moving All right, on. moving on. Free laptops and hotspots, thanks to HCC's public service librarians and the Ro is it the Rotaract 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 Club. HCC students may qualify for re free laptops and hotspots. That's right, laptops and hotspots. Uh, go to two different e two different website addresses. We're going to put them in the in the social media post of the show. You go to one for laptops. You go to one for hotspots. We can hook you up, so make sure you uh, check that out. Okay, folks, very serious subject, or you'll be getting that dreaded email if you don't uh, take these courses, but there are mandatory trainings for HCC's faculty and staff. Brittany, have you done yours? <laughs> no. <laughs> Read on. <laughs> have you? <laughs> of course. It, not. Of course. Anyway. Anyway, um, this is a positive and safe environment for the entire HCC family to start with learning more about topics involving compliance. So each semester, HCC faculty and staff through our employee online learning are given a list of compliance learning topics to complete, such as, but not limited to, Todd, cybersecurity, standards of conduct, FERPA, workplace safety, Title IX, and the Senate Bill 212. So to access your mandatory compliance training, follow uh, the following steps. Basically, just go to your email, search, you know, the employee online learning, just to find that email that's going to take you to the link. Yeah, look at it from talent engagement, and you can uh, take these courses. You want to take them. They are important. You do learn some things, and it's very important to stay in compliance. All right, pipe dreams. After the winter storm, now's the time to consider maybe getting into plumbing. We needed a bunch of those back in the middle of February, a bunch of plumbers. Well, we're trying to train more of them. You can get into it. Uh, classes are being held in June and July, and uh, it's only $545 to get certified. 
and there are grants available. The courses can be paid for. So make sure you sign up. Let us help you find the tuition, but sign up and get out there and get a job. Okay, a class that will grow on you, Brittany, growing on you. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm going to be real frank. Um, I never liked biology, but biology for non-science majors will be taught in June and July. So that's beginning June 7th through July 11. So biology uh, 1308, that's going to be offered for non-science majors. For questions, you can email uh, Dejan Grigsby. Uh, we'll be sure to put her email in the post after the show. All right, student work study program. This is part of financial aid where you can actually work a job, get paid for it, and that'll be part of your award settlement. So it sounds like a good deal. Well, check out HCC's work study program. Positions are now available. I was just talking with someone the other day. Uh, Doctor, uh, well, it's Joe Ellen. Used to be Joe Ellen Saucier. Now she's Joe Ellen Price. She's the executive director of our financial aid. Congratulations to her. Uh, she was talking about the work study program and we have a lot of jobs open that we can get students in, get them a job and that money that you earn will be part of your financial aid award settlement and you don't have to pay it back. We'll have a link to this program in the social media post for the show. We're also gonna have a link for our registration because that's going on too, Brittany. That's correct, Todd. So summer registration has already been underway but we just opened our fall registration this past Monday, April 12th. So you still, of course, have time to register for both summer and fall, but classes will be limited uh, based on the type of modality you select. We did talk about how we're offering uh, full-time face-to-face classes as well as hybrid, but again, they're gonna be small. So early registration is crucial. So we still will be offering our online anytime, online on schedule. We're now offering hybrid lab and hybrid courses. And of course, the in-person uh, face-to-face courses with the traditional meeting pattern. Now, uh, I can't stress this enough, y'all. If you especially want to enroll in face-to-face, classes are going to be very small to adhere to social distancing. So it's key to register now. And it's easy to remember, Todd, because people just go to hccs.edu slash now to register. Yeah, it's one website. You can explore the courses, look through the steps to to apply. But the main thing is when you apply early, Brittany, the cool thing about it is, you know, that payment plan, well, you have longer time to make those payments if you have to pay. Keep in mind, we've got financial aid, but we've also got scholarships. A lot of our programs, more I think than we've ever had, have these grants. You know, we got the Texas Reskilling Grant, which was like $750,000 just to help students pay for tuition. So a lot of our programs, Brittany, are basically free. You just sign up for them and your tuition's paid for. Several of them are. If they aren't, we have ways to help students pay for them. That's absolutely correct, Todd. And the very fact that we have these grants are being offered to students who essentially just come to school for free. Yeah. I mean, you, you come to school for free. You don't have that stress about finances. You, you know, earn and learn a skill set and it puts you into a job. And when we talked about the plumbing, yeah. you know, especially after the freeze, that's a great career to have. I mean, there's always going to be a need for plumbers. So students take the advantage and sign up for classes today. Once again, by going to hcs.edu slash now. Okay, tomorrow on the show, we got a great show lined up for you. Uh, It's Film Friday, and the special guest will be a good one, Dr. Philip Gardner. He is the co-chair of the African-American Tobacco Control Leadership Council, and he is a pioneer in uncovering how Blacks were targeted for menthol cigarette campaigns for the past 50 years incredible, fascinating subject we're going to be talking about. He was also part of a film called Black Lives, Black Lungs. We'll be joined by him tomorrow and another nice side winner. Oh, yes, that's right. We're going to be spotlighting Shilpa Fonsi. I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that last name. I apologize, uh, but she is the program coordinator uh, for computer science in the Digital and Information Technology Center of Excellent. So she'll be joining us along with Dr. Gardner for tomorrow's show, Friday at 10 a.m. We'll see you then. 